What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another video with me, Ben Rogajan, aka the Seattle Data Guy. Since I've been talking about low code solutions for data ingestion, I just wanted to poke around with a few over the next few weeks because obviously we're going through this whole data engineering project video series. But at the same time, there are other options when it comes to connecting to data sources and pulling out data and ingesting it into some sort of data warehouse. And probably over the last five years, there's been nearly 300 to 500 million dollars just thrown into the data ingestion problem alone, just because there are so many people who understand that if you can become a major component in the data pipeline, there's a lot of money to be made. We've already seen the same thing with Snowflake DB as it was the largest software IPO ever. And so there are a lot of other companies trying to fight for space in this area. And they're all kind of creating what we now know as this term called the modern data stack, which is really trying to make the whole process of getting data from point A to data warehouse to data visualizations and machine learning models much simpler and smoother. So you don't have to have so many steps in there. You don't have to manage so much code. And so there are tons of options when it comes to looking for the right component in terms of the modern data stack. And which means I need to be on top of the game in terms of what actually fits and what actually exists out there. Because again, if you recall that one image I showed you a few months ago, where it was like all the data tools that exist currently, it's barely legible from a far distance because there are just so many. And so it is kind of a struggle to keep up with everything, but I think it's kind of great to see what's new, what's coming out this year, what's coming out last year, see what challenges they're trying to fill in, see how they're trying to compete against what already exists in terms of like data ingestion. And today I want to look at rivery.io, which I've been kind of poking around with for the last few days, because they have a few interesting components that I've been at least curious about. So I wanted to poke at it and dig into it and use it to kind of pull in some data into Snowflake DB that I've set up. So let's dig into Reverie.io and see how it's trying to separate itself from its competitors, as well as kind of poke around with bringing data into Snowflake DB. So with that, let's go into Reverie.io. So like many solutions out there, you'll have this dashboard, you know, it's very similar, I think, in some ways to you think like Airflow has their own dashboard where you can kind of see what's run, what hasn't run, what's successful, what's not. The other things that are very helpful here in terms of kind of trying to simplify the process overall is the fact that they treat connections like an entity that you can reference over and over again. One thing I've noticed in some other tools is sometimes you have to create a new connection for every data pipeline. This becomes very problematic because when you think about it, let's say you've got like 100 data pipelines and Maybe you need to change your password for all of them. Or maybe you have a security policy where you have to change that password every 30 days. Well, now it's gonna be very painful to have to change it in every 100 of those pipelines. So having it set up this way where you have each connection where you can reference it over and over again makes a lot of sense. And I think it definitely is a little more consistent with modern tooling where a lot of them have it set up this way. And they also have things like environments and variables and things of that nature. And here's the thing that is helpful with tools like Rivery they just take away a lot of the repetitive work regardless of the tool. So if you look at like connection and we go to create a new connection. So you'll notice here that there are tons of options and they, they break it down by like marketing. Let's say you want Postgres because we we're doing Postgres in a project. They have that, right? Like you can connect to Postgres or RDS on Postgres. So that's connected. You, you don't have to go through the process that I showed you in the video. You have that option S3 that exists, you know, or Salesforce or something where it's like you need to connect to specific tooling Marketo, I assume. So they've got Marketo and they've got all of these things that you often have to connect to and pull from, especially if you're in marketing. That's one thing that I think a lot of people try to connect to is a lot of these tools. And in particular, I wanted to look at one of the features that they're trying to add in, which is kits. And I think kits are essentially act as data models or kind of data pipelines that are pre-made that you can easily pull. So if we go over here and I look up YouTube, because I'm going to look at YouTube data, I want to look at my channel's data essentially. And we use this kit. Let me just hit use kit. You'll see that I can first just tell it the connections I want, which is test Snowflake and test YouTube. Again, you can use these over and over again and not have to replicate um, the same connection. So let's say it's my kit is on my way. I'm gonna now view the rivers. And so before I think I just had this top logic version, but then I was like, oh, let me just try to use one of the kits. So it looks like they've got videos and user activity in this kit. And now I can essentially set up a schedule here. So let's say schedule me. Uh, sure, we'll say every hour for now. Let's save this. Then I'll do the same thing here. Hourly save. Now I've just refreshed the page just to show you they've, they're kind of on top. So these are scheduled. And now for one, I'm just gonna try running this. There are some assumptions here. The assumption is you've already built this table. So you can actually look here to find the table. And so once you have that, you can pretty much almost run things. You'll also need to make a few changes to target. So you'll need to focus on whatever database you're going to and whatever uh, schema is. In this case, it's demo DB and public for me. And then from there, you can pretty much start 
everything. Like that's the only things you need to change. Make sure you have a table and you know define out your database and schema. And so from there you can hit run just so we can see how this runs. So now you can kind of see it running um, below and it's kind of starting to run the initial report. And you'll also be able to look at this in the activities tab as well, but I just wanted to kind of show it here first. Let's see, okay, now it seems to have run successfully. If I go to activities, let's see. Oh, sorry, not activities, dashboard. You can kind of see all the runs that I had. Just make sure this was running correctly. Also, if you did want to track activities, you could see the failed ones and the successful ones, and you can kind of see where in the pipeline it failed or what time. So again, very similar in some ways to Airflow in terms of like being able to track this down and figure out where in the task something went wrong. In this case, there's an Amazon S3 to Snowflake issue. So that's where there used to be a problem, but that should be all fixed at this point. And now we can kind of look at the data. So this is my Snowflake instance that I'm just going to hit run for this table that we have that we created. And I'll put the create script below in case you need it. And we can kind of see the analytics here. So it gives us the date of when people viewed something as well as the channel ID, which is just my channel, um, the video ID. So if you want, I can actually look this up. There's my beautiful face, but let's see that this one is What's going on, guys? Welcome back. five data engineering projects to put on your resume. So that's what this is referencing. And it can also give you some information about, you know, how many likes people probably shared on it. I'm going to guess likes goes for per person as well as maybe on all the comments as well, just because there's, you can have more than one like per video. Um, it also will give you some things in like watch time, which some of these looks like no one watched, which maybe that's because they're bots or something. But I can say something like, you know, where watch time, or let's just order by, order by watch time so i'm curious to see like exactly you know 400 some minutes where that breaks down to oh i think this is just per day so this is per day per video that makes more sense um so this is per day per video that's the granularity that we're looking at so on this day there was 88 views and 452 minutes of watch time which goes to let's see what video this is just for my curiosity oh interesting wow one of the more popular videos was, I guess, this one recently. I think, I guess that actually makes sense since I only looked at four days in the past. So obviously this is one of my more recent videos. So it makes sense that this is very popular since I just released it. But yeah, so this is kind of the part one of this video series. I'm gonna kind of do some analysis on my own YouTube analytics because I'm curious about digging into it. But as you can see, it didn't take us long to get this data into Snowflake using Rivery. And so from here, I can now do some analysis on it. But I just want to kind of dig into this and give you guys an example of how low code solutions can simplify a lot of your coding work. So you can focus more on either the analysis or building some sort of integrations or complex components that have nothing to do with, you know, just doing basic connectors. Um, hopefully this was helpful for you guys, just to give you guys an example of some of the low code solutions that are out there. Uh, let me know if you want to see more kind of low code options, because again, that is something that us data engineers do use and will become, I think, more useful in the future. So thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Thanks and goodbye.